I'm back here with Graham Bashu. Did we decide whether Canon or Sony was better? Stick around. All right, so yes, I admit, Graham, that was a little bit of clickbait there. Of course, we know that Sony is better or maybe Canon's better, I don't know. It's whatever you whatever you decide. Whatever you decide is better, that's what's better for you. So Graham, uh, you're loving the C70. I'm loving the C70. If you watched the last videos, looks a little different now. Yeah, it it's looks got very some different. stuff on it. Yeah, okay. okay. I like this handle, so that, that wasn't on there before, right? It was, yeah. Oh, was that's it? That's the stock handle. Okay. Oh, I'll go through it all in a second, but I'll, I'll tell you my, my, my philosophy here. Okay. Okay, because I've got a philosophy. You've got a philosophy. I've got a philosophy, this is my only philosophy. Okay. Right, I want this thing to be as lightweight as I can, I can make it. Yes. Right, and still be effective to use, mm -hmm. and ready to be pulled out of a bag and shoot. Yes. I don't want to spend a lot of time rigging up a bunch of gack on this thing. Mm -hmm. I want to get out and shoot. Yeah. That's what I've been working on and I don't I also don't really want to spend a huge amount of money yeah. right I feel like the Canon cameras uh, sort of come to you in a ready to shoot mode yes. kind of you want to style. pull it out you want to, you throw a battery in it put some cards in it yeah. and get going so the the best I mean the best sort of um, functional aspects is all, uh, of these cameras is all the controls mm -hmm. the batteries last forever yep. right so I don't need a V mount or any of that nonsense so I don't need the extra weight what do I need I need mounting points yes. I hate cages mm -hmm. because cages always block all of the controls and for they me. add weight. And they add weight, and, exactly. And if you want to quickly change gears, throw it on a gimbal, you got to take it out of the cage. Exactly, and, yeah. exactly. So I, I automatically I said I don't want to get a a cage for this thing. Yeah. But I will buy an inexpensive Tilta top plate okay. and bottom plate. Tilta makes good stuff. Tilta does make yeah. good stuff. This one here is, I, I researched it quite a bit and hopefully everybody can see there. It's kind of interesting. It's got uh, one, two, three cold okay. shoes on yeah. there. Oh, nice. Right? Okay. Uh, also the uh, sort of uh, ridged uh, yeah. mounting point for the top handle. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to see, but there's also a um, NATO rail. Oh. So lots of good options if I need to throw something on there like that G2 receiver. Yeah. I can just mount it on there no problem everything's good keeps it low profile yeah uh, the second kind of issue I had was uh, the mic mount from Canon mm -hmm. is okay but not great okay so I you know broke the bank uh, spent uh, I think a hundred dollars and got the wow. um, cold shoe Ryko liar yeah. shock mount right? okay and I see you've got it in just one of the cold shoes here and exactly. it looks pretty solid it feels like that's not going anywhere it's a it's a good one uh, there's yeah. not a lot of um, transmission noise from the cable or anything oh, like that excellent. you trust dry coat for things like that yeah uh, and in it is the uh, if you don't know about this mic, Chris, man, oh man. Which mic is it? This is the Audio Technica 875R. Okay. This is uh, a great, inexpensive, P48 powered camera mic. How directional is it? Uh, not bad, okay. not bad. It's yeah. cardioid. I, okay. wouldn't, I wouldn't call it a super cardio yeah. cardioid, I, I, but I'm not an audio guy either. Mm -hmm. However, my audio friends love this mic. Really? So okay. About 200 bucks on Amazon. Wow. Not really? expensive. I got this one used in new condition for yeah. $100 Canadian. No. So if you guys are wanting to know how to get amazing deals on used or, or uh, slightly used equipment, you got to talk to Graham. I think we should have a YouTube channel just for you <laughs> showing people how to shop for gear online using Kijiji or whatever else you use because it's you like always get the best deals. It's like a hobby. Yeah. You should create one of those apps. Uh, my daughter Faith just got one of those apps for, for the grocery stores and it compares uh, all the coupons and stuff. Idea. You should, uh, yeah, it could be the Graham's camera app. <laughs> So I've got it connected yeah. uh, through this little uh, cable here. There's a low profile right angle XLR to yeah. low profile right That's angle. That's a great idea. Cause I, I mean, I, I've never even thought to look at the right angle ones. That, oh, I love those. That yeah, is... One less thing to poke me in the eye. Yes. Right. Uh, and of course it goes to mini XLR there. Mm -hmm. uh, here's a trivia for you, Chris. Okay. Okay. See if, see if you remember this. You can right. see here that I've got uh, this camera mic plugged into um, input number two. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. um, why traditionally do we put the camera mic in input number two? Do you remember that? Well, I, I can tell you why I do it. Okay, why uh, do you do it? So I always put my, my shotgun ambient mic in channel two. I like to have my guest, if I have them labbed or if I have a boom, I like to have uh, you know my subject in, in my left ear in channel number one because of course when you're throwing your timeline, but now I started doing stuff long before nonlinear. So 
I, you know, I didn't go to school for this stuff, so why do we put it into Channel 2? Uh, I didn't learn this at school, but... <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Back in the videotape days, yeah. Channel 2 was yeah. on the edge of the videotape. That's where it was right. located. So if yeah. you were going to have tape damage That's on videotape, it would happen on Audio Channel 2. So you want your so you put your actualities on, on one, and you put the audio that you can afford to lose, which yeah. is camera mic, on Channel 2. So you, I, I think Old habits die hard, man. Yeah, I think some at some point we should maybe do a video showing where uh, all of these new people who've only started in the digital age, where all of these terms and techniques and things come from. Because, I mean, something like that, yeah, it doesn't really matter now. But that's just how we do it. Just like calling stuff B-roll. You mm -hmm. know, our visuals, mm -hmm. our cutaways, we're still calling them B-roll. And that really is only from the old tape days. So it's, exactly. It's yeah. funny that we still use the term B-roll, mm -hmm. but we never use the term A-roll. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't, anybody, yeah. only like well, I've been called an A-roll before. Have you? Yeah. Okay. So good. <laughs> One other quick thing uh, with the, the base plate. I wanted to just mention the base plate yeah. um, because Chris is going to make fun of me about this, which okay. is fine. Um, the weird... This yes. takes care of the weird horizontal okay, mounting so holes we were talking about before. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I put a um, Kessler um, quick release thing yeah. on there. Mm -hmm. uh, but it also has this little uh, doohickey here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's for that left side handle. Yeah, for the rosette. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Except mine, the one that I ordered is back ordered. Ah. <laughs> so I haven't been able to try it yet. Yeah. I, I just pretend. I'm like, yeah. One day, one day nice. you'll have that handle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. And then in terms of the lens, um, the lens setup here, mm -hmm. uh, this is just the, the EF to RF uh, adapter yeah. with the, uh, the unicorn lens. Okay. The Ooh. Canon 17 to 55 28 yeah. IS. Yes. A bit about lenses in a minute because okay. this camera is weird with lenses to me. Okay. Um, but with the top handle with a little bit of Velcro on it, that's how I shoot. And I okay. shoot this with the, like this with on sticks. I shoot handheld yeah. with it, and it's been working great for me. Now I see you've got uh, you've got some gearing here for follow focus. Okay. So do we not? Let's talk about the lens. Then. Okay. So I call this the unicorn lens because everybody and their grandmother on the internet always says, why doesn't Canon make an updated uh, lens that's perfect in every way? Yeah. It could be 17 to 55, it'd be fast, it'd yeah. have IS and all this kind of stuff. And they did make that lens, this is it. And it's not perfect. It has a whole bunch of problems with it uh, that are, I think, probably inherent to lens design. Okay. Like it vignettes a little bit okay. at the wide wide end. Mm -hmm. And they, they reversed mechanically how this lens works right like you got this okay. large ring here for zooming yes and this tiny little ring for focusing and yeah, i'm like that's i can't stand this i have to, uh, this is like a cool lux uh yeah um rubber geared lens mm -hmm. th for a follow focus i yeah. don't use a follow focus i just need something to grab onto okay. that i know yes yeah, so you manual feel, focus. yeah okay no that's good so you don't use a follow focus that's more for your no. for your hands can i just yeah. i want to see uh, thing, i'm just looking at uh, how this one of the things i've noticed so one thing that I do like with my Sony's because of the smaller body size is that I can have my hand underneath and I and can reach adjust. now, but here I'm for me now I've got smaller hands than, than the average person, but here I'm going to have to really get my fingers out to reach that. So in some ways it's good that the focus is back here and not at the front of the lens for this lens. Of course um, you could just rely on uh, Canon's best in class autofocus. Yes, you could do that. You could do that. And the reason I'm thinking about this is because recently I had a project where they required me to work with uh, the Blackmagic 6K pocket cameras. Mm -hmm. And um, fortunately, I, we needed to do pretty much everything on sticks mm -hmm. uh, or, or or sliders or whatever. But that was one thing I noticed is hand holding those Blackmagic cameras. That's when I started realizing that's not practical because I can't, no. I can't reach, like there's no, there's no contact point you know, I want to hold the body of the camera and then just use my fingers to, to lightly uh, uh, touch that. And, and you just, you couldn't reach the, the front of your lens and support the camera at the same time. And I got to tell you, so like whenever I've been shooting handheld with this, um, like we're in kind of a, it mm -hmm. kind of sits, you know. Yeah, that's, that's something I, I that's it's something because that makes of this, me, uh, okay. Quick I, I like it when I can leave the camera flat on a table and not have to worry about it. It's flat. Tipping. Okay. <laughs> on a bit of an angle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when I've been shooting handheld with this camera, mm -hmm. um, this is maybe where I can talk about the limitations okay. that I've seen. Um, the, the low light performance, like high ISO performance, I should yes. say, actually, is quite good with this camera. Okay. Like I've shot at 6400 and a little higher, and it's pretty clean from what I can tell. And right? is that the native? Like is the... 800, the I think, is the native. Rant time, okay? <laughs> Tech specs don't matter. Yes. Can you get the shot? 
That's what matters. Yeah, that's amen. I can get the shot with yep. this. Uh, the 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 high ISO or higher ISO performance is quite good, okay. right? Which allows me uh, in uh, it, it allows me to use a, a different f stop, which is a, you know a wider depth of field, for example. So a 17 millimeter lens yeah. at say f8, right, and adjusted with a slightly higher ISO still looks clean, yeah. right? So when I'm following somebody through undergrowth or whatever, yeah. I don't need to worry so much about critical focus. Right. I can look at the peaking and you know how much of this stuff is in focus, yeah. right? And then when we have a second, yeah. then we can change those settings around. We can drop the ISO. Mm -hmm. uh, we can open up uh, the aperture a little bit, you know, go to f4, f5.6 or something like that, nail that critical focus and, and hold it and it's fine, right? Yeah. So it's worked really well as far as that's concerned. Mm -hmm. Some of my older cameras, like my C200, for example, doesn't really have great performance as you get higher up in the yeah. ISO. So you yeah. have a little le less flexibility as far as that's yes. concerned. Yeah. So that's one thing that I've liked about this. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about the lens lenses then? Yeah, let's talk about lenses. Okay. I. I the RF mount I love because it's new. <laughs> so, and I hear, uh, I've not used it, so I have uh, no horse in this race, but I've heard from a lot of guys that are using the, the, the RF uh, that, the same thing, they love it because it's new, they think that there's potential down the road, but most of them are not enjoying the RF lenses. Okay, uh, I only have two or three okay. RF lenses and I haven't really used them too much on this. Mm -hmm. What I think the best thing about the RF mount is similar to the E mount, okay. lots can be adapted to it. Yes. Right? Yeah. So it gives you a lot more flexibility with the mm -hmm. lenses. And of course, with the speed booster too, you get some, some choices there. But uh, my criteria uh, to keep this thing light and easy to use, yeah. I had to run through the, the lenses that I have to mm -hmm. see what's going to work the best, what's going to be the best trade off. And right. like I said, this, this lens isn't super sharp. It vignettes at 17 millimeters a little bit. Yeah. Um, I also have a 24 to 70 F4. Okay. Um, so I tried it on the, uh, just the regular adapter. Yeah. Of course, 24 millimeters on a super 35 sensor isn't quite wide enough for me. Mm -hmm. So that's out. Tried it with the speed booster. Okay. Works great. Hmm. Okay. Much faster. Yeah. But heavier than this combination. Ah, right. Okay. So I'm like, eh. Don't need the speed booster. Yeah. In the end, what I've been using for almost everything is that 17 to 55. For okay. a wide, I use my infamous Tokina 11 to 16 2.8, okay. which is a great lens. Yeah. Uh, for an ultra wide, and then if I need a telephoto, uh, I have a 70 to 200 f 2.8 mm -hmm. two an IS yeah. lens, and I also have uh, the 70 to 200. Cine servo zoom. That is a right? very cool lens. Which is a great lens. Yeah. So there's, I also have the 18 to 80 version of this, which okay. is, a, I love that lens. Yeah. It vignettes with the speed booster. Oh. It's fine with the adapter. This, of course, does not vignette with the speed booster. Yeah. It's, you know, longer on the back end. Mm -hmm. The back focus is much longer. Um, and you can access the back focus on this? Yeah, right there. Oh, love nice. it. Yeah. Great lens. So this works really well with the adapter. I don't need to really change anything. And it's fairly light. It's not a heavy lens. Okay, let me right? see here. Yeah, no, I think it's this lighter is... than the the two eight, the yeah. seventy to two hundred. Yeah, I have the version three of that, mm -hmm. and this is definitely lighter. And it's it's you've got a servo zoom on it, which is which is which great. I can use if I want to. And, yeah, and uh, and that's great. So it mounts on the like I mean, I can show you. This is the same size as the eighteen okay. eighty. The eighteen eighty would be the other option here, mm -hmm. but this is the this is the the other problem that I come into here. Right. So we get this guy mounted on here. And that has the oh, iris. Oh, it's got an iris ring on it too. I, oh, yeah. I love having an iris ring and not... Uh, this is unwieldy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although it does actually feel kind of nice. Yeah. So try that out, Chris. Okay. Like you could use the, the 1880 okay. like that. Yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm resting your hand underneath here. That's, that's not you don't so mind that? It's definitely It's definitely heavier, but it feels more natural in my hand. And the fact that I can I can hit my iris here with the thumb. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want to do a manual zoom, I can do that. Mm -hmm. Reaching the focus might be a little more of a challenge, but if the autofocus is working, then then uh, like finger extensions or something. Yeah, Only fingernails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, I don't that's I don't cool. know. I haven't really used the 18 to 80 on it. It feels too big. And okay. And we have another problem too. Not going to fit in my bag. No, you're not going right? to fit. So bag. now I have to yeah. take more things out of my bag to fit that. Yes. Yeah. That's that's it's why. Bags. I like my, that's why I like my Tenba when I'm shooting locally, uh, any place that I can drive to. Uh, I like my Tenba bag because I put everything, it's all assembled the night before mm -hmm. and I'm just pulling it out and putting it on, on the tripod. Yeah. So at the, at the moment, I'm, I'm stuck with that 17 
to 55 with yeah. the adapter. What right. I'd love to try is um, the uh, RF 15 to 35 okay. 2.8. It's an IS lens as well. I'd love to try it and just maybe see how it works. Your friends at Camera Canada? Maybe. Maybe Cam Joe will help me yeah. out. That would yeah. be great. Um, that would be really great to try. But at this point, um, we're pretty well built out here. I, I think this is a usable documentary run and gun. I hate to use the word run and gun. Hey, Verite style. Yeah, yeah. Rig. Run and gun. I, I think the run and gun's fine. That's okay. It's, you sound like a, <laughs> sound like a commando when you're doing Whoa. it. You sound cool. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's good enough as is, uh, and it leads me to like my my main conclusion about this camera. Other than one other thing, is that the most expensive accessory for this camera is going to be an RF lens. Yeah. That's basically it. Yeah. Um, you can use the existing lenses with a hundred dollar Canon adapter. Yeah. Existing EF lenses. Uh, I've got uh, some broken on Cine lenses. Uh, they work great on this. And the speed booster you have, uh, it's an uh, EF, EF to, RF to RF speed booster. Yeah. So you could take, so the one advantage of that is if you want to get more out of your lens, you can, right? So you can take your EF lens and actually get an extra couple of stops. Yeah, two stops, I think it two is. Two stops, um, yeah. And it, it um, adjusts for that in the viewfinder too, so oh, it'll, wow. it'll, it'll tell you that, yeah, right? Yeah. Now, it ha does have some compatibility problems. The 24 to 70 um, F4 that I have uh, technically isn't compatible because this is a Canon speed booster and, and mm -hmm. Canon does things like this. Yeah. It's technically not supported, but it does work, right? Okay. So it reports the proper f-stop, it reports the proper um, focal length and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you get the wider field of view, right? Um, but it gives you some sort of warning in the screen about that. Yeah. Just ignore it. <laughs> it works. Yeah. Okay. The last thing about this, yes, I feel like we're going on pretty long with this, but yeah, we probably are. But uh, if it's too long, comment below. Maybe we'll shorten it. Maybe we won't. Everett can edit too. Yeah. <laughs> How are your eyes, Chris? Are your eyes okay? Uh, so far, why? Do they look funny? Uh, how, how close can you focus? <laughs> okay. Uh, with yeah. those eyes. So, all right. So I'm about to hit a milestone. I'm not telling you how old I am, but you can figure it out. He's 30. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, I, I do, I think I mentioned this in the last video that, yeah, I'm at the point now where, you know, being too close to the camera is sometimes a little problematic, and that's why I like to have a viewfinder. So, I don't know, like, like right about, uh, I'd say, Six inches away, I'm still good. Yeah, yeah. So just sort of, you know, I'm kind of like fuzzy right about here. Yeah. I'm starting to get a bit fuzzy. So that's been a problem. Like mm -hmm. that's been a major problem for me. All you young people out there. Yeah. Right? You don't have this problem. But here's what I have to do with this camera, right? I have to hold it out further. Yeah. And I have two points on here. Yeah. This camera badly needs an EVF. Yes. Okay? It badly needs an EVF. I I'm think sorry. I, I see all these guys uh, out there, a lot of YouTubers out there, and they're shooting without EVFs. And uh, they've got their, their uh, Atomos Ninjas on there, and they're using them. And that's great. I like those too. It's nice to not have your face buried. And especially if you're walking, it's nice to have both eyes open instead of one eye closed. Another guy you know uh, I, I like the monitors but for critical focus for composing your shot I can't I can't do it without an EVF I just have to I just have to have it and if you've never shot with an EVF before um, there's a there's a sort of a psychological thing with EVFs too and I don't know if you've ever noticed this Chris but um, when, when you're looking through a viewfinder, it focuses your attention. Yes. You are in the moment when yeah. you're looking through that thing. It's kind of hard to describe unless you've actually done it. I've, you're never going to be in the moment looking at this thing no. because you're going to see everything. But focusing yeah. in on that little screen yeah. really helps. Yeah. It really helps me anyway. Yeah, I, for me, like composing my shot, I, I get my better shot compositions when I'm using an EVF. And I feel like... Uh, you know, because a lot of times I'll do long interviews or, you know, um, you know, really long segments with a talking head or, or something like that. And having my face planted in there, I almost feel like I'm in a dark theater watching a, a movie, exactly. right? And you don't get the same experience or same attention. Uh, and there's details that you start to notice if you look in that EVF long enough, then you start to realize, oh man, I'm getting a reflection off of that. Like, yep. uh, you're probably getting reflections off these lights in our <laughs> windows here. And I apologize for that. Uh, again, it's a backyard shoot. Um, but yeah, having your face planted in an EVF totally focuses you in on that. So, uh, luckily, this camera's gonna have to get an EVF. It's just, that's the way it is. Which uh, one I'm, are you gonna get? I'm, uh, I've ordered a port keys okay. uh, LI. 
All right. Or lie or however it's Yeah, I, I'm curious. I've been looking at those online, and I, I'd like to try one out. Cause... I don't want to, like, uh, rag on the Z company because I do love their stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, EVFs are super expensive. Yes. So I will start at the inexpensive end and mm -hmm. see how that goes. Yeah. I do have a uh, Port Keys, uh, I think it's a BM5 monitor. Okay. And I've had small HD monitors. I've had a bunch of different um, inexpensive monitors. Yeah. That Port Keys... Um, uh, BM5, I think it is. I think it's a BM5. Mm -hmm. SDI inputs, HDMI inputs, cross converts between the two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Camera control, touch screen, great little, a great yeah. little monitor, very bright. At a fraction of the price. At a fraction. I bought mine used, but it yeah. was even new. It was a fraction of the price. So I thought I'd give them a try. I'm going to buy a brand new uh, Li. It's a, it should be on its way some one of these days. Yeah. And I, I think I'm set up to mount it somewhere here. I could put it up here. I could put it here. Mm -hmm. It may not be something that I use all the time, but yeah. when I'm out there, um, you know, going through the bush, uh, mm -hmm. looking for gravestones or something, um, it would be really nice to have that. And then an additional point uh, uh, to, you know, brace the camera against yeah. me uh, is great too. Maybe I'll even use the 18 to 80. And, yeah, maybe. You know, maybe, maybe it'll, yeah. It'll work out. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I'm very curious. Uh, I have been looking at the port keys. Uh, I had thought that uh, for my A7S III setup that I was going to get the Zacuto Gradical uh, or the Chameleon, mm -hmm. but uh, I've been looking at the port keys and it's a lot cheaper. Give it a and, try. Uh, yeah, because I have some shoots coming up where I need to take... I can only take this guy and I'm trying to figure out how I can package it. I'm going to I'm going to do a video once I have it put together cuz I'm totally redoing my whole cage setup and I think I have a way to put on my my larger power zoom lens. Mm. Uh, but it, unfortunately, although you can do a zoom through I want to be able to, you know, do a nice and, and one thing that I, I may have to do here is what you've done with um, uh, an up, upgraded third-party handle. Yeah. The C70 handle is a little bit plasticky. It's a little bit yeah. cheap, and you've only got a cold shoot there. Yeah. I, mean, I do like the little. So, uh, I, mean, it's I a nice do like the little clip. cable yeah. clip there. Yep. But you would be able to put that Li right on there with a not, ball mount. Not only that, you could put a 15 millimeter rod. That's right. Put the rod in there and then have something so you could have it out like a off regular side, camera. So I, I do like how how they give you this option here. That for, may be a, for a that rod. may be something that I have to do at some point yeah. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But okay. hey, you know what? I didn't want to spend a huge amounts of money and I no. don't want the full cage on it. No. So. No, you know, I think we could we could shoot a documentary on this. I think we should. Uh, totally, yeah. Uh, we're just going to need to get a better backpack. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, you can use one of mine in the in the meantime if yeah. you need to. So. All right. Great. <laughs> great. Well, uh, are we going to talk about the tripod? Uh, do you, do you want to just do tripod as like bonus content, like super quick? Sure. Okay. 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 All right. So let's. All right. Hit so we're switching gears camera. again. We're going to move this down here. Bye. I'll put it in my camera bag. See if he notices. Okay, so Graham, we've talked about the C70. We've talked about all that kind of stuff, some lenses. This is a long video, but you've got one more thing you want to show us today. Well, uh, Chris, I'm jealous of the tripod that no, nobody can see it right now. The tripod that you're using there, you've got the Sackler uh, Sackler Flowtech with the A6L uh, head, which yeah. is a little bit light for my FS or my FX9. But yeah, it's I love the sticks. I love the Flowtech sticks. I uh, as far as tripods go, um, I like a hundred millimeter. Ball head. Yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I like a relatively big yes. tripod. Yeah. Uh, I like a big head. I've got a uh, a really old 50, uh, 515 uh, O'Connor head is okay. my, oh, my wow. main go-to. And it's yeah. like, it's big and heavy. It's a beast. And it's, it's yeah. on Sackler carbon fiber legs. Yeah. I like them big. Mm -hmm. I like them big. Yes. He likes them big. However, yeah. <laughs> but that camera's not very big. Yes. It, uh, sitting on that O'Connor, it's, the O'Connor is overkill. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, um, the, the friction is infinite on that thing almost, okay. right? So it, it, it'll balance and mm -hmm. it, it'll be fine, but I need something smaller. I need something light that yeah. I can carry with me easily. Just mm -hmm. throw it over my shoulder. Yeah. Um, the Flowtech would be great. I just don't want to buy a brand new tripod. Yeah. That's of what course. it all comes down yeah, to. Yeah, I get it. Right? Yeah. So I, I, I got, uh, the carbon Some fiber Miller, legs. Miller yeah. solo oh, PV like legs. legs. Do you? Yeah. I yeah. don't mind them. Uh, it's they're different because they've got these co compression locking yeah. thingamadealers. Um, I like how small it folds up. What trade? Mm, no. <laughs> uh, I like how how small it folds up as well. Uh, it doesn't deploy as fast as that Flowtech, man. No, nope, that Flowtech Flo -Tech deploys very, very nicely. It is fast. Yeah. But uh, it has very much of the same um, kind of. Uh, abilities as the flow tech, right? Like yes. those legs go out all the way so I yeah. can get right down on the ground. That's nice. And I'll tell you, 
like with that small C70, yeah. and I have that 100 millimeter uh, macro lens, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And we're like right down on the ground, shooting through things with the macro lens. Yeah. Beautiful shots, mm -hmm. really, really nice. Now, the only problem with this thing is that it came with a Miller head. Okay, so you had to upgrade. I have a Miller, I, I have a bigger, I have a 100 mil DS25 head, mm -hmm. which isn't bad, yeah. it's okay. Um, but the DS10 head that came with this thing, mm -hmm. granted these are all old, yeah. um, did not quite have the um, uh, the tensioning, mm -hmm. uh, the fluid settings that I wanted. Yeah. So my buddy Brian uh, had a Video 14 head, and I don't know if you can see here, mm -hmm. but it's old, right? It was made in West Germany. And that hasn't happened in a long time. No, nah, it's been a yeah. while. Yeah. This is a Video 14 2, 75mm okay. version, yeah. um, and it has a bit better it, it's still kind of overkill for the weight of that camera yeah. but it has some more um fluid settings uh that allow for a little bit better dampening yeah and it's a it's a nice this is a nice setup okay. um you'll have to give it a try chris because so it's you've taken the slow. best of miller and you've taken the best of sackler and you've the best together. of australian engineering yeah. from 15 years ago With and the best german. from german west german engineering west, yeah. <laughs> from 40 years ago yes yeah <laughs> and and this is this is a good setup for me yeah that's and uh, I'm an inveterate mixer and matcher of yeah. things, right? You have to use what works, you have right? To use what and works. that's why uh, you we mentioned earlier about the the tech specs, tech specs and stuff on paper. That's great, but really, uh, it comes down to what are you doing with it? How are you using it? I love to own my own gear because then I get to know it. I get to know uh, how to get the best out of it. I know its flaws. I know where it excels, and I know how to how to do that. Okay. I I don't like it when somebody just hands me a camera and is like, "Go shoot this." Yeah, I can get it done, but I don't, if I don't know that camera, you know, well, then y you're just not getting the best out exactly. of it. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I think I'm I'm more or less set up here. Like with, I, I, we need to do something about the backpack. We'll do eventually. something about the backpack. But. Um, what I've what I've done is I've put a, a strap on the C70, wore that over my shoulder, yeah. put the 70 to 200 in the backpack, put yeah. that on my back, and then carried this in, and so it's basically like a one bag kit kind of thing, yeah. right? And yeah. I've got a bit of audio stuff in there that I can use. Okay. Uh, the EVF will, will be an, uh, an improvement as well there, mm -hmm. uh, but this is this is a pretty good setup. I think I think you could shoot with this, right? I, I would sure. gladly shoot with this. I think it's a very good setup. I just yeah, I'd like to work uh, out on uh, a different bag for the camera, okay. figure out how to carry it. So Graham, what I'm thinking is uh, I think we're at the end of this video, but I think maybe in a few weeks we can reconnect. And we'll set it up differently so that we can you know maybe do a top down camera. So we can uh, take a look in our bags and uh, and I can show you how I like to travel. Um, one thing that happens with me a lot is every shoot is different. So I'm always packing differently and I'm always trying to find the best way to pack because I do such a variety of different things totally. that it's never the same setup twice. But uh, keep watching. Please hit subscribe, hit like, uh, you know, hit turn on that notifications bell, comment below, send us, send us photos of uh, of your setup what yeah. what camera bag do you like to Let's use see what all the documentary guys are using whenever they have to go into cemeteries so. hey, exactly yeah we need I to mean, talk I might about be the only your, one doing that we, yeah <laughs> well we need to talk about your cemetery stuff i go i go into ancient tombs you go into uh old overgrown cemeteries totally but make sure that you're following us and yeah seriously send us your thoughts on backpacks tripods lenses what do you think of canon versus sony it's a the ongoing battle that will rage for centuries but uh, we'd like to hear from you and stay tuned because we will be back and we'll look at our setups and how we like to, uh, how we like to hike with gear in rainforests or wherever. <laughs> as few steps as possible. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Graham.